Today we talk about artificial intelligence. Are we there yet? Right here on the PSD EdTech Coaches Podcast. Welcome to the PSD EdTech Coaches Podcast, a podcast for educators by educators that love to equip teachers, ponder, and discuss current issues and climate in education. With your hosts, Dan Hotman, Melissa Shields, Jerry Sloan, and Steve Stuckey. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. I am Dan Hotman, one of your instructional coaches in the Palmdale School District, with my co hosts, as always, Melissa and Jerry. How are you guys doing? Hi. Hello. And I, I have this uh, sneaky suspicion we have someone joining us. I don't know if we have a voice out there that would like to join us and say hello. Is there a voice test, out there? Test, testing. Hey, can he, you hear me? He got it to work. It's a miracle. You got to click it there. You okay, Steve? All the way from... I may, I may not have been doing a lot of tech <laughs> recently, but you know, I will get it eventually. <laughs> All the way from Marietta, California, joining us is Steve Stuckey, who has been on assignment, retired for the last couple of years now. How's it going? Retirement, not to rub it in or anything, is uh -huh. pretty awesome. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. And, you know, I, I'm, I'd like to say that I'm a grandpa again. That's right. Yay. Congratulations. I've got my second grandchild, Caden Christopher Stuckey. Love it. That name Christopher, it seems like it has a line through the Stuckey lineage. Well, that is correct. That is my son and daughter-in-law's child. Not even two months old yet. That's crazy. Yeah, we didn't Close get pics. It. I mean, we, we need auditory pics here. Yeah, I know, really, we need to have pictures. Maybe I'll throw some up on the, on the video part. Okay. So what are the types of things, and, I, and I, I think I asked you this last time, you know, you checked in, and what have you done over the last year? Like I, I, I get to see a lot of what you do, but what, what have you been up to? Well, we've been doing a lot of traveling. Uh, we did a whole Midwest jump last summer. We've been to Hawaii uh, back in the springtime. We've been remodeling the outside of our house, babysitting grandchildren. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. Well, pickleball. That's right, pickleball. <laughs> bocce no, ball. I, you know, no? it hurt my knee, so uh -huh. I haven't done pickleball in a while. But there is weekly golf, and uh, I am bowling at least once a week on our bowling team. <laughs> is there bocce ball in there somewhere too? Y'all, y'all, y'all laugh about. Um, no, I'm not doing bocce this okay. season, but yes, there has been bocce ball. There's a bocce uh, season. You, you laugh about bowling, but you know, I want you to say that I was the original president of the Palmdale Teachers Bowling League oh. 35, 36. I can't remember how many years ago now. Wow. That's too many years ago. I don't have enough fingers and toes. And I still have that ball. Do you really? Are you still using it? It's my spare ball. Yes. Okay. Is it pink and black? Yeah. Pita on the, <laughs> the, pita, the pita colors. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, as always, it's great to have you in. I know that uh, Thanks. as retired as you are, trying to get you pinned down on a date sometimes can be difficult. <laughs> so I'm glad you could squeeze us in. I just want to know how much am I getting paid for today? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we figured it, you know, we figured it's a Monday. So I figured we double what we normally would give you. Yes. So I think, I think we're good. Yeah, to, yeah. I think we're good this time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on a fixed income. That sounds pretty fixed to me. The Just fix send us is your in. invoice. The we'll fix is in. We'll yes. show your signature. <laughs> well, you know, today we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence in the classroom. Are we ready for it? Is it something that we need to worry about? And so that has been the hot topic. And, and so for myself, I've been talking, I have a few friends that work out in Acton, I'll go to say, and we've been having this conversation and they are, they, it has been a hot topic even in Acton, which is horse town and... You know, even, the, even in Acton. Even, even in, in Acton. Acton. That fact, should be a t-shirt. It's a big deal because <laughs> even in Acton, who just got Chromebooks for the first time ah. a year and a half ago, they didn't get very many during COVID. They okay. are now one-to-one -one out there after a year and a half. And so now it's been the hot topic within their teaching group. So the question is, is then, are we ready for AI in the, in the classroom? And what does that mean? What does AI mean? So, Jerry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you up on this one. What does AI mean when we talk about AI in the classroom? Well, that's a good question. We're hoping that it means um, not somebody doing your work for you, 
but we're looking at it as a way to enhance uh, planning for the most part, really, and um, teacher, you know, lessons and making them a little bit more, um, not only easier, but bridging the thinking, right? And when Melissa was looking at some questions on AI this morning, and the open-ended ones were great. I mean, your brain's broken at the end of the day, right? Or even <laughs> on a weekend, you're like, I got a plan for next week. But why not have someone who's feeling fresh to help you? So I, you know, I love the everyday AI that we already use that we don't even know we're using. So it sounds like this creepy, intrusive thing. And yet, we're using it every day, all the time, without even knowing it. So just making, um, it's almost like when they took the internet and made it something that we could all just ask Jeeves, right? <laughs> ask a question. <laughs> I mean, every morning I'm using it when I, you know, hey, what's the weather like? You know, and I'll, I'll call out our, our device and say, hey, what, what's the weather like? So I know what to wear. And that's AI right there um, because it'll start asking predictive questions and like, do you want to know this for today? Do you want to know that for t tomorrow? And I'm like, no. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then there's all those targeted ads. Oh, yeah. Oh, my stars. Yeah. But, you know, we hate that. But also, we like our social media feed sometimes. When it recommends something, oh, that's cool, right? Well, and I think I think people think that artificial intelligence, when it comes to all of what you guys are naming, as if it's new. We've never had AI around here before. Oh, yeah. Whether... When you're, when you're driving and you're using ways to find out where you're going and there's an accident and it redirects you, that's AI. Yeah. Those things are working. And so some of the questions that I always, I always ask is, you know, using AI, what educational goals can I cover? I think that's important. That's a great question. Um, how can AI enhance the learning experience for my students? And that's just a couple of things that I, that I think about when it comes to artificial intelligence. But what we've seen are all these new programs that have AI embedded. Um, mm -hmm. One of the big ones that, that we've seen is quizzes, right. where you can, you can give them, you give quizzes the material, and it will give you the questions to ask your students. I think that, that can be powerful because now I've just reduced the amount of time I have, like Jerry was saying, when it comes to planning. I'm just gonna- but If you can actually transform what goes on just through your teaching, uh, kids learning, and like you said, administrative tasks that takes that time away from pondering over and, and writing up your own quizzes and looking for questions. Uh, what a time saver. Right. Oh, it is. And I, mean, I can remember sitting in PLC meetings and, and especially with, and Steve will remember this, we would sit down in our PLC. Well, for Steve, now it's PLC plus meetings. We would sit down in these professional learning communities and we'd be creating our tests and ORs so we could we find out what the kids know and what they don't know. We would sit there as a group and we would come up with the questions. That would all just be reduced from an entire meeting down to a couple minutes. Yeah, just pull out the ones that you like. I mean, you could do okay level them. You could just just pick out the ones you like. And, and, and anymore, you don't yeah. even have to, like before with earlier AI, you would have to copy and paste in the standards and say, here's the standards, take a look at this. And now you just say, I need standards for fifth grade science and I need some open-ended questions that have blah, 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 blah. And it'll do it for you. And then again, like you said, you can pick them out. And, and I like it when you take the textbook, you're like, I don't like these questions very well. And no offense, but like benchmark, <laughs> they're okay. You know, you can up, up them, you know, let someone else make better questions for you, same material. So what would be... Well, then you can that, also add in those questions at different levels and right. reading levels for the kids too. So that could really help out personalize some of that learning. Mm -hmm. and, and I think personalization for me is the big thing, um, yeah. especially yeah. now. And so to kind of clue Steve in with, with PLC Plus, it really is about the individual student. Not that PLC wasn't, but now the drive is a little bit more on the individual. And so you're absolutely right. We can actually tailor those questions to what the students need and less of, of really um, what knowledge does the group need to know. Um, the question I like, to, and I, I'm gonna ask you guys this, what are the benefits and the drawbacks in using AI in classrooms? So I'm gonna start with Melissa, we'll go to Steve, and then we'll go to Jerry. Okay, well, so I was just playing with, um, one of the things that we're likely to recommend to teachers this year is, um, so far, is DIFFIT. And um, for, for many reasons. D-I-F-F-I-T. Thank you. <laughs> um, and for several reasons, um, but, but, you know, 
my, you know, I play around with it to figure out, you know, where, what are its limitations or what do we need to do? And, and the whole thing about AI is it's, it's learning. It's always learning. So the first few times you use it, it just spews out something, but not quite what you need. And so you, you know, I take it at its word. If it says enter literally anything, I will enter literally anything, a, a URL or an excerpt, or I will tell it to just go search. I'll give it some keywords. And um, so on the limitation side, remember that AI is learning what we're doing. So if I ask it to give me fourth grade standards in social studies that asks open-ended questions or whatever, it may come up with something that's not quite right. And many of our of these AI platforms will have a, how did we do, thumbs up, thumbs down, because it's trying to learn. Um, on the plus side of that, what I found specifically with Diffit, but other AI you know, in quizzes and Canva and everything too, is it does save you a lot of time. Um, and what was the other thing? All right, and it just left my brain. Um, I think just being able to very quickly select things you can, you can put in this, ex I can put in a video. And now we've learned through playing with it that you can't grab the share button in YouTube. You have to actually grab the URL from the Omnibox, but um, dropping in that in and it'll grab up parts of the video, but you have to like everything else, right? You can't just go, Oh, look, I'm going to grab this video, drop it in and grab the questions and go with two minutes before class starts. Like pulling something down about teacher pay teacher and not vetting it before you use or it. Or yeah. walking yeah. into the classroom and going, okay, I did page 48 yesterday. Let's start with page 49 today. You just can't do that. You have to be planning, right? So you don't just grab a video and then before your kids walk in, you have to vet these things before you put them out there and make sure that what's coming up is actually what you want it to get, the main ideas. But the fact that it'll learn and the next time I use it, or if I add additional prompts, like within chat GPT, I can add additional prompts to refine yeah. what I'm looking for it to do. Um, it's what I'm excited about when we are able to use bits of this with students is that it's teaching students critical thinking because to create those prompts, it's not, it's a learning process too. You say, I want to have this. I mean, we haven't talked about the whole fear of cheating thing, but I mean, if a kid just tries to throw something out there and wants to, it, it, it's not going to generate things like they think it will because the AI has to learn. So you have to do more refining. And in that case, if students are doing more refining in their prompting of anything in AI, it's going to, they're going to have to start critically thinking about what they're looking for. And then they learn something in the process. So there's yeah. an additional benefit there. Very true. Steve. Uh, uh, I, I, I think the biggest drawback part is what you kind of addressed is the uh, learning that has to take place on how to question right. uh, and, and ask a full question that meets all of what you need. Any vagueness is going to get vague answers or really broad answers uh, from, from an AI generated question. Uh, so I, th I think that's one of the drawbacks, but I think once you learn that and you can teach people how to question appropriately uh, and more in depth uh, to get exactly what you want, uh, you can go ahead and then we've mentioned already before, personalize the learning. You're gonna save yourself some time. So you, your, your efficiency in the use of your time, and this is like anything else, once you learn how to use something, you become more efficient at it. Uh, but you know, I think about what I could have AI do for me, uh, besides grade and assess assignments for me. That could be uh, tremendous. Uh, any schedules and maybe even attendance for all that matter, who knows. Uh, analyze all the student data and give me trends for what the kids are, are, are doing and so that I can adjust my teaching to that. Uh, yeah, I think those are all. So yeah. Yeah, I think those are all, all good ones. Yeah, I, I think what Steve said is so true about the, the prompts and really fine-tuning. And, you know, Melissa's played with it. I think just going into a few blog posts, doing a little research first is really helpful to in how to use it to benefit you because, you know, what you put in is going to really color what you put out. Although I'm, I'm also reminded that, you know, when we use our voice technology and our phones, the more we use it, the better it gets. And that's also part of the downside. It's like, what, what is the data that it's using? Because it's going to use a certain database to, to do that machine learning to push things out. And 
yeah, if you're, if, and, and the downside is, is it going to be lack diversity? Is it going to lack this? Or, you know, is it going to, uh, have a problem with uh, meeting students' needs. Well, if you put in more data, if you keep using it, it's it's going to get better and better. I have to laugh just okay. because we were looking last night about um, predictive text and autocorrect and everything. And Robbie goes, you know, as long as we've been using autocorrect or this predictive text, he goes, it seems like it's just getting worse and worse. <laughs> like it's just submitting the wrong words. And and for us, you know, we like we play with Duolingo and everything. So I have additional keyboards. So it's always auto correcting for the other languages. And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. You want someone to anticipate your needs, right? If you have like a personal assistant or secretary, but then when they do that or a husband, like I do, then when they do this, I'm like, no, no, I didn't want that. You know, it's, it's a double edged sword there. It is. And, and what I do notice ad wise that the ads get more targeted based on how much it's learning. They work too. Oh, yeah. yes, they do. Oh, they Don't play. Do. Weirdly, I thought it was only through, spo I mean, this is how, you know, I've learned, right? I thought it was only when you say things out loud, when you, when you say things in front of your phone or your, your home device or whatever, my daughter sent me a, she was telling me, oh, I got a thing for the car the other day. And she was through text. It wasn't, it was very nonspecific. She said, you know, like I said, oh, the cubby hole. And no, no, she sent me a picture of the part of the car she was talking about. Within an hour, I'm flipping through like Timu or something, and it showed all the things for that device yeah. through a picture she sent me. And I'm like, I'm sorry, oh, I don't okay. get that. I have an iPhone. I, uh, so I, 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 have, I have a couple system. friends who are not on any kind of social media, and they've lived in my community for 36 years, maybe. And they tell me that I know more about what's going on in this community than they do. And how do you do that? And I go, things just find me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know that so about true. people all over the world, but well, and you're I think referring I, to next door, right? Well, I think I've told this story before, but uh, when my parents first moved to Georgia, we were having a conversation over FaceTime. And I can't remember what exactly it was, but it ended up talking about something very specific with, with a car or whatever, a house item. Within an hour after the conversation, I get a phone call from my dad and he's, he said, you are not going to believe the ad that just popped up <laughs> explaining exactly that. Um, so one of the things that Melissa brought out, brought about was about cheating. Like how do you prevent students from cheating? And, and I found this video on TikTok and I wanted to play it. Wait, before you play but, the video, can I just say yeah. one thing? Because I was going to, one more on that. You asked about benefits. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw somebody posted the other day. Um, they said, was it maybe in Twitter X or whatever? where they posted a worksheet of math problems. Mm -hmm. And then they showed how somebody had entered that into chat GPT or something. Mm -hmm. And then below it, it put all the answers and there were complaints about, well, how am I going to assign homework anymore? Blah, 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 homework, homework. And a couple of the posters, I, I just had to smile when I saw it's already been proven that homework does not work for most students. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so, you know, yeah. maybe we get rid of some, older teaching ideas because that's Biases. the way we've always done it yes. and maybe look at what research is saying now that actually work and maybe in 10 years research will say no no, no you need but right now research is showing that ho giving homework to students 40 problems on the you know 40 double digit multiplication <laughs> problems one through is 25 going to help them yeah. become better multipliers AI, AI that that's for sure yeah so <laughs> so, so and, and i'm gonna i'll be i'll admit i have no idea who these people are but what they said i thought was very uh, what she said was very intelligent about what teachers need to start thinking about when it comes to AI. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. What's the professor to do to, like, I don't know, prevent cheating? How do you know your paper wasn't written by ChatGPT? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the, the best way, the most effective way to fully prevent cheating mm -hmm. is to assume students are using AI and test for that knowledge in new and more challenging ways. So maybe that means we flip what used to happen at home, maybe that happens in school. But it also means if it's no longer sufficient for a student to write a basic paper or essay, because AI can do that, we need to raise the bar on what humans bring to the table. We did this with math, the calculator meant math got harder. So the same type of updating with AI, so maybe this looks like a teacher assigning, go write this essay at home with ChatGPT. 
come back into school and with no AI systems, improve it, critique it, argue <gasps> against it. So we need to level the playing field the same way we've done with other technological innovations. And I know sometimes there's like these AI detectors that people try to use. Mm -hmm. We can't, those don't work. They're not very effective. They can actually penalize people who have English as a second language. Yeah. And even OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT, pulled their detection tool off the market. So instead of playing whack-a-mole and trying to yeah. spy on who's yeah. using AI, mm -hmm. We really need to adopt it and, and wow. prepare for the future. With the TikTok ending at the end. So, I, and I think she hits it right on the head. I love the idea of saying, put it through ChatGPT, although, you know, 13 and above only, um, but using the AI to an advantage of the teacher instead of leaving it up to the students on their own. And just, I like the idea, assuming that they're using it. And we get caught up with what education is to us because that's how we grew up and that's how we raised in the usual system. But what are we really preparing students for? Are they going to go out into the workplace and write a five paragraph essay, you know, on their mm -hmm. desk about something? That's not really what they're going to be doing. So we might as well just, you know, teach them for their future. I agree. And I think, I think a lot of our jobs that we're seeing now are all have AI embedded in them and how are they going to adjust to that when, you know, maybe AI will be wrong and they'll have to use their human judgment. They need that practice for sure. Critical thinking. Teach, teaching yeah. kids how to critically think, critique others' work uh, would probably have a bigger payoff than mm -hmm. you always, you know, collecting their essay, for example, and giving your just your feedback, but allowing them to see other kids work as well. And I always I, love making be, marks on an essay that they'll never see because they don't look back at them. Go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. No, I, <laughs> I, I think one of the greatest things that had nothing to do with AI, but I would put up problems around the, the classroom, yep. whether on a whiteboard or butcher paper and have kids rotate through and critique the other group's work for process, for correctness, uh, and okay. explain why it was right or wrong. I like that idea. And it, it's funny, one of the teachers I was talking to out Acton, their response to AI was, my kids don't write papers on computers anymore. They have to turn it in written by hand because if they're going to sit there and copy a chat GPT, they're going to be put through the ringer of having to sit there and write it. It's a model text. <laughs> yeah. They're going to have to sit there and co copy by hand. Mentor if you get an essay, obviously, that's, you know, written by a fifth grader and it's at a fifth grade or above level and yeah. you and see their previous The hyperlinks work, are still in there. Sudden, <laughs> they, all of a sudden they have this awesome essay. Uh, yeah. that's, it, that's, maybe AI was involved. That's yeah. an advertisement getting to know your students, really, and uh, knowing in their levels. And Well, and I, and I think at least for, for the three of us, um, what where we knew that AI had hit the classroom is I got an email um, at right before Christmas break last year. And the teacher said, how do I check for AI? I was out for a few days. And when I came back to check the work, oh, yeah. <laughs> there is no doubt that this student used AI. He is not that good of a writer. <laughs> and you know what? He's absolutely right. And when you can see that type of an improvement on it. So I like the, I love the idea that she said about taking what the writing that you've art that the kids have done or having chat GPT, do you know, the work. Right, do the work. Yeah. And then analyze it to make, to see if it's correct and what you can do to make it better. Yeah. I like that idea. Make a Google pr slide presentation on the, the chat written. Absolutely. <laughs> Say that <laughs> the important points. It, well, go ahead. You know, as a teacher, I would take that essay that the kid has written maybe and put it into AI mm -hmm. to get feedback yep. uh, from AI for me to help, you know, guide the kid's performance later on, but not having AI write it. No, and I like it. What I like about that idea, so I had Luke do that um, on one of his papers for school. He had to write a persuasive essay. And one of the things that ChatGPT came back with is um, you need more historical background. So he had to write a, a paper on on the idea of zoos and if they're okay to have, basically. You know, is it is it humane to have zoos? And one of the things that the ChatGPT came back with is you don't have enough historical data to Not support evidence, your argument. Yeah. yeah. And so he was like, okay, well, that means I need to do more, more research. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to go do more research. He put it back through. And then it said, you need, you know, you, you, you talk about the historical evidence, but there's no dates. Okay. I need to add in dates. So he added in the dates. So B 
being able to refine uh, student work, I think, is a great idea too. A little less painful than yeah. going. And it's not just ChatGPT, but right, we we're we're taking a look yeah. at a lot of the AI. Um, I think I have Brisk on my mm -hmm. computer right now, which offers suggestions for correcting. You know, if you have a an essay you're looking at, and it's like, would you like some recommendations on? And it'll provide you with actual like comments that you could add in, like. Hey, this is missing this here. Hey, do you want to say this? And you can adjust it and again personalize that information. Um, I don't. I don't know what else we have planned for this conversation, but I would like. I was thinking it'd be kind of cool to mention some of the sure. benefits of some of the other AI that we've played with. And yeah, we can, let's talk about that. But I just want to make sure that that we're very clear on this because I know in our district it's very very much a we, we go into a defensive a defensive posture whenever we have something new like this mm -hmm. we're not blocking anything ai students won't have access to the ai because they need to be 13 or older mm -hmm. however when it comes to teachers by all means where you see it's appropriate use it it's important so melissa what are some of the the programs that we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks um well i mentioned diffit which is um and and why i one of the reasons i like that a lot is because we have way too many open positions in this school district yeah. and um and we're finding that you know ap's and you know lead teachers or whatever are having to come up with lesson plans on the spot for a class they don't know on a subject they don't teach and one easy way to do that would be to use something like diffit where you can say i need seventh grade language arts writing standards i need an article and i need questions that involve critical th I mean you know and again they'd have to know how to work those prompts but it's something that would if you've got to create a lesson plan for a classroom that doesn't have a teacher you know it's helpful um, we have being a dual language district basically um, Canva you know the other day I, I created a sketch and tell template and Canva has a Google Translate option now granted it is Google Translate so, you know, our Spanish-speaking teachers can look at this and say, oh, well, it's missing an accent or whatever. But what a nice time saver to have where you you created your device if you're an English-speaking teacher and then you can, boom, translate it and it'll be in pretty much whatever language that Google Translate's in because that's in Canva. So, you know, and it creates it as a separate document or even our Google Docs, you hit Google Translate, yeah. you know. I'm sure you can have chat GPT translate anything as well right into multiple languages I would bet. you can and and so also the, the whole reason everyone brings up chat gpt is that because they are the for, the forefront of all this but a lot of these um different programs that have the ai built in are using the interface of chat gpt you yeah. just can't see it so you you know we we i think chat gpt has become the face of everything but really, I mean, there's there's a bunch of them out there. Bard is another one for yeah, Microsoft. Yeah, Google Bard. Um, Microsoft Bing. Um, yeah, Microsoft Bing. Sorry, Google Bard, Microsoft Google Bing. Bard. Yeah, there's so many out there. And so understand that when, when we talk generically about AI, we're talking more than just ChatGPT, more than, than Bard, more than Bing. We're talking about really embedding what you're doing. We have a, a, a whole list, though, that Chris yeah. Jones put together on AI uh, apps for teachers. She's done a lot of research into that as well. So um, if you want more, we've got, we've got a lot. <laughs> so you brought up Diffit. What, what's another one that Melissa, that you wanted to bring up that you can think of? I know I brought up quizzes. They have an AI generator on the inside of that one. And you know, what's really cool about the quizzes AI generator is you can go back over your old quizzes and you can have them like I had, you know, basic vocabulary type of information or, you know, factual information. And you can tell AI to there's like these prompts and how do you want AI to change the questions? And it can change them to real world scenarios. It can make some of those math questions, you know, if you had something in there more realistic, <sighs> like, Oh, this problems. is why I need to know this. You know, it's yeah. like questions that make it more real as opposed to, you know, a squared equals B squared plus C squared. Real and relatable. A plus. You mean making it more real than 32 pineapples on a truck? <laughs> going home? I kind of like that okay. one. That might be real out here. Actually, it would probably be like oranges or coconuts but yeah well uh jerry how many what other programs have you interacted with well one of the things that i was thinking of and melissa mentioned canva was the the, the ai image generator there whereas <laughs> that one all, needs a lot of training though <laughs> oh but it does but need I, a lot of training looking at it as you know teachers want something to be able to do um um eight parts yeah with where you do writing practice every day and it's easy and fun 
And, but they need, you need a picture, some, a funny picture for kids. So you could actually generate some, I mean, so what if it's goofy? They're just, they're, they're dissecting that picture in grammatical terms. Card games or something. (laughs) So they put the noun, the verb, you know, whatever they see down there. And then they write a sentence. I mean, you could just do it that way, make life easy that way. Steve, I know, I know you don't have all the, the different programs we're talking about. But yeah, I'll go back to you know chat GPT. But one, but one I would use, yeah. obviously, and I think that uses an AI portion of it is Grammarly. Yeah. Where yeah. it uses it to help improve your writing skills. I mean, it's learning what you do. Because what are they doing? It suggests grammar. It suggests spelling suggestions. It offers uh, style suggestions for you. Uh, it'll even check for plagiarism <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you want. And Google Classroom is starting to do a lot of that too, embedded. I mean, yeah. maybe not as powerfully as Grammarly, but they've got a bunch of stuff in there. So if you want to dive into Google Classroom deeper, let one of us know. Yeah. Anything else artificial intelligence-wise you guys want to talk about? Or we could... well, oh, no, I'll remember as soon as we I'm end sure this we thing. I'm <laughs> like, oh, I should have talked about whatever. I do have one thought. Yep. Uh, I think teachers are probably going, oh, my gosh, PLA, PLC plus, differentiating. Oh, my gosh, what a pain. I already do enough. You know, and I get that. It just seems like a lot of work. But what we're talking about is looking at your lesson plans differently so that everything is quicker yeah. and deeper and embedded. And so more accessible. That you're not just taking this and redoing this lesson plan for all these different levels. You're taking one di- lesson plan and just, you know, and having all the parts in it that it needs it, like even diff it that will change reading levels. Mm-hmm. which is really nice. And, you know, no offense to New Zella. I love New Zella. But um, these are, you know, a, a quick and easy way to change reading levels. So it really is a lot quicker than you think it is yeah, in it your is. mind. Because we're, you know, old school. We got to learn the new school, man. Not to go back on. Well, that, that's, yeah, go ahead, Melissa. No, I was just going to, because you mentioned Diffit, not to go, you know, back to that. Like it's, the I, anyway. I barely know anything about it. But we've tried it. So. We did take childhood story. I mean, mm-hmm. this is I'm testing the limits, right? So we took a child story like Little Red Hen or something and and put in grade level eleven. And it changed the text in a way where it was it had vocabulary that was it was still the same story, but it was with added vocabulary and background information that I thought I thought it was very clever because yeah. we didn't think it would go up. We knew that it would simplify, yeah. but we weren't sure it would go up, and it did. So that was kind it of was impressive. Fun. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Steve? You know, I'll just say there's, there's no doubt that AI is not going away and that it is going to get bigger and bigger in the lives of everybody. And so at some point, train, teachers are going to need to be trained, get some professional development to be able to uh, use it effectively uh, and efficiently although AI might actually uh, start <laughs> adapting it for you uh, and make you more efficient. Uh, but that, that's a huge part. And so, you know, I know as tech coaches, we often talk about, well, we, this will save you time. It'll make your job easier. Uh, but there is that front loading part that we all have to become knowledgeable about in order for it to get to that point, but it's not going away. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I would look at teachers and I would say, uh, you know, if I was sitting there around that table, my focus it, it, when I'm in the office would be learning this stuff yep. so that I can efficiently teach the others so that they make their life easier. And it's funny you said professional development because uh, we will have a session at our EdTech Summit here coming up in a couple weeks now. Mm. October 14th. Um, October 14th. Um, but specifically on shameless AI. plug, shameless, October shameless plug. October 14th, I'll take it. Eight to 12, eight to 12, uh, Palm Hill school district employees will get paid. Innovations Academy, Academy across yeah. from the water park. But yeah, no, we will have a session on AI and as Jerry, Melissa and I get more embedded ourselves with AI, you're going to start seeing us use it a lot more with our professional development or sorry, professional our professional learning. learning. Yes. You no longer call it professional developments, professional learning. So we want to make sure that that our teachers are as as up to date as possible, um, which I, which I to me it's fun. I, learning about this stuff is yeah. fun. It's um, like ooh, it's ooh every time you say ooh, this is going to save so much time. Ooh. Improves your cognitive health. Well, and, 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 and the little bit that I've dealt with it, it amazes me how quick mm-hmm. it comes oh, up yeah. mm-hmm. with suggestions and information based upon my questions. Yeah. Blows you know, me away. I'm reminded of something that I used to hear Steve say often at the end of our Tech Tuesdays. And you're going to help me with this phrase because I'm not exactly sure. It was something like 
you don't have to worry about technology replacing the teacher, but, and we can switch that with AI specifically, but go ahead and say it, Steve. Technology will never replace a, a teacher, but teachers who don't learn the technology will be replaced by those who have yeah. learned it. Yeah, and that's, that's so true. It's one of the questions we always get, well, do I, is it okay if I use paper in my classroom? Absolutely. Please. You are the professional. Use paper where you need to. Will AI take over that? No, not if you don't let it. You use technology. Well, you know, the, when you think back to COVID and when that hit, yep. who were the most frustrated teachers on the planet? The ones that had those never touched who, technology. Those who had not yep. been up to date on their tech skills. But multiple modalities, I mean, pencil and paper can can become a tech portfolio a piece. Yeah, it is a technology. Yep. You've got to use the different things. We're not saying... We don't have to go out and char our own wood to make pencils, right? (laughs) right. um, Ticonderoga does a really good job of just... Oh, they're the best. Yeah. They're the best. Yeah, Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I think embrace what you can. Yeah, No one's saying you need to learn it by tomorrow, but embrace what you can. Use your coaches to help come alongside you. Use us to help plan. Use us to help co-teach. This is what we do. My, My new phrase now when I go to and I present either at staffs or work with PLCs is... Have us help you. It is literally in our job description to help you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let us do that. And so um, that's let us help you. And that it w- can take 10 minutes, folks. It yeah. doesn't have to be this huge deal. No, it does not. It, it does not have to be a full on 45 minute coaching session. We can come in and just and just sit by us, you for a few minutes, get your questions answered. And the reality is that we're, we're looking at your learning goal, right? So the first question we ask people, I have people say, how do I use this? How do I use this? My first question is, what do you want the students yep. to learn? Because that's what matters. It's not how do you use this. It, I don't know how to tell you how to use that if I don't know what your students are trying, what you want them to learn. And the learning goals are always first. Right. So. And sometimes you can say, well, that's not going to help you. That's <laughs> right. right. Exactly. It's going to do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but with, as with anything, if you're not going to use it consistently. Right. I can even talk about some of the edu protocols. You're yep. not going to get the value out of, out of it. I tried uh, it one time. We, Why doesn't it work? Well, because you tried yeah, it one well, we time. Start off hot. That was a great idea. So I want to, you know, I love it. I love it. And then you throw it in the backpack of knowledge and forget all about it. Mm-hmm. And you wonder why you're not getting any of those results that you're hoping for. It's because you're not being consistent in, in using these things. And, and to trying something the first time and it doesn't work right away. And then saying, like, oh, that didn't work. That's what we do. That's not good modeling for our kids because that's how we learn is to have it fail. And then we keep improving. That's how you improve your classroom management. One, I think consistency is part of it. And I think intentionality is the other one is making sure that you, you know, I'll give you a great example is when I get an email back from a teacher says, yeah, Hey, I, tr- I tried, um, thin slides and it just didn't work for me. Okay. Well just, you know, let me know so I can help you out. You know, what did you do? Well, you know, I gave them their, their uh, thin slides and they're working on the, on the water cycle. Okay, well, did you do what we said, which was introduce it with something low cognitive so they can learn the protocol and not worry about the information too much? Well, no. So really, it's one of the reasons why, I mean, and Steve will tell you this too, as baseball coaches, we don't put them out in the middle of a game without going through a practice. Mm-hmm. You, know, it's, you know, if you were to take a kid and just say, all right, it's time, it's time to go play a game, let's go, they're not going to be successful unless yeah. they have background in playing. That's why we have practice. So and you, the, the, the background is scaled. It's absolutely. down to, to simple steps to begin with. Exactly. The complexity will happen yeah. once you're comfortable with it. I, I always used to get on the, the treadmill, the teaching treadmill, and be in a hurry for everything. And that's not how students learn, and that's not how mm-hmm. things work best. That's how the outside forces um, are you know, showing me my master schedule. That, that's great to have that, but... I can't teach my kids based on a hamster wheel. It's true. And I, that's why I love what, the way John puts it with, with uh, the military is that, you know, when they, when they enter boot camp and they, they see him run for the first time and they stop him and they say, okay, no, first we need to march. They teach him how to march. Then they have him walk and then they have him run and they break down and how to do it correctly. It's mm-hmm. the same thing with the edge of protocols. It's the same thing with everything that we should be doing. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have to break down the learning from what they've already used as, as a way of getting through school and really break it down to what they need to know going forward and make it more efficient. So those super techie teachers we have, and we do have a lot of them, that was the key piece that you just heard. Because we know you know how to use technology. And in fact, if you had all the time in the world, you could use all, you could figure out all these systems all by yourself. 
first of all, you don't have that kind of time. And second of all, how does it look like daily in a classroom, which is what, you know, Steve and Dan just described. Yeah. And it's, and don't assume that the kids know. Yeah, ever. I know. Don't they might be good at I tech. Kind, that doesn't mean they know it. Yeah. I kind of look at learning the kind of the way I do home repair projects or home remodeling projects. <laughs> I, I, I have a vision. It's a big grand vision of what I want to accomplish. And I run over to Lowe's or Home Depot and I buy some stuff that I think fits my vision. And then I come in and start and I get to a point going, that vision wasn't right. I need to revise that and do it in a smaller step and go back to Lowe's or Home Depot <laughs> oh, yeah. and get some more parts and come back. Yep. And, you know, because I start off with this big, huge picture yeah. and didn't start off breaking it down step by step on what I need to do to create something beautiful in my home. Yeah. I have to learn the hard way, which, by the way, takes me twice as much time and money. <laughs> Although there's a lot of learning that goes on in the hard way, I have to say. There is. <laughs> well, there is, it's but it doesn't always fun. have to be yeah. the hard way. It doesn't have to be. And uh, especially if you we, do it, we, don't reflect. Yeah. Yeah. We all learn from our mistakes, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, you know, those who don't, that's a whole different <laughs> level of insanity, right? But uh, if you could minimize that by able to critically think ahead of time. You're gonna you're gonna yeah. be better off. Anticipate problems, yeah. All right, some things coming up from our department. We've already mentioned our EdTech conference coming up in two weeks, October fourteenth, as Jerry said, at Innovations Academy, eight to twelve. Who's keynoting? Kim Vogie. Kim Vogie and John Crippo will be there. You'll have some PSD teachers presenting, including at least two out of the three of us. Melissa gets kind of some time off. She gets to go kind of t check out all the other sessions. Oh, I'm going to learn. She's gonna go to learn. But, you know, come out. If you're a PSD teacher, you get paid for being out there for the few hours. And, and bring your friends who aren't PSD yes, teachers. They it, don't get paid, but they'll it have is open. Time. It is open to outsider districts. So by, by all means, please do. Um, on top of that, we had Propel, which Steve was instr instrumental at starting Propel. We just sort of tweaked what his original vision was um, and changed it into a self-paced PD. Um, that's opened up, and we've got some really cool classes. Jerry, what classes do you have going on? I've got Choice Boards which would go well with AI maybe. I'll have to think deeper about that. And digital citizenship. And the choice boards go really well with what, what everyone's been learning with PLC Plus. And, yeah. and I think that's that's a really good- Make really personalizing good easy. Absolutely. Yeah. And then dig, Digital Citizen Month is October. The week is like the 16th. Anyway. Yeah, that's coming it's, up. It's yeah. a timeliness in there. I don't know. Yeah. Alyssa. I've got tier lists, which is an edge protocol. And um, it's uh, it borrows from the gaming culture. Spell it. T I E R. Okay, tier just because it doesn't sound like T E A R. No, tier. <laughs> I'm just saying. Tier. No, you got to be a tier. <laughs> it's not for crying. It's for you know ranking. Yeah, El teachers. Uh, tiering, <laughs> putting things in tiers, ranking them, and it borrows from gaming culture. So you're already going to have some buy-in from your students before you even start. Um, but again, like all edge protocols, we recommend the the low, low cognitive con. load, yep. so something fun, um, and uh, then. But it, it's really about critical thinking it's about collaborating and it's about um rationalizing and um what is rationalizing the right word when you're when yeah. you're yeah when you're trying to give reasons reasoning why, reasoning yeah, yeah reasoning it. so yeah and then i've got uh sketch and tell for math with a weekly notebook that goes along with it so we'll be taking a look at that and then a protocol we have not touched at all which i'm really excited for Wicked Hydra. Mm -hmm. So being able to question, Steve mentioned that earlier, being able to teach your kids how to question. That's all this is, is a, it's a protocol for them to work on questioning. Um, so I'm excited about that. Steve, what do you have going on? Coming up oh, here. What do I have going on? I, I am just looking forward to sliding into this fall season and hopefully have nothing much going on. <laughs> but, I, but I do want to say, because... You just brought up choice board, yep. so I thought I would ask Chat GPT while we were sitting there <laughs> to to uh, I asked to create a student choice board about the westward movement for fifth grade with higher and lower level choices. And boy, howdy! Before you were done <laughs> talking about it, I have some higher level choices of what we can put onto a choice board, and some lower level choices, and even a bonus challenge. Nice. Oh wow! There you go. You have to share that with Jerry. <laughs> yeah, you have to email that to me, man. Do you have any trips coming up? I have no trips. Uh, we were originally going to talk about going to Israel in 
May, but we've decided to pay ourselves back for all the home construction. <laughs> <laughs> I know Petra. So at some point, we'll find something to do. Yeah, and I know Petra was on that list at one point as well when you headed out there, wasn't it? It was, and my research was that was going to be a headache to put together by myself. I bet. I bet. I bet. I wonder if I wonder if there's a church group that's going. That's usually the way. Well, that's way. what who I was going to go with. Oh, okay. Petra wasn't part of the trip, right? And so, if you did it on your on your own, and even if you didn't, any vehicles coming from Israel to Jordan stop at the bridge across the border. You have to get off, cross yeah. over, get on another vehicle, yeah. and be oh, able wow. to carry on. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there's still some uh, open uh, issues, I guess, between. <laughs> <laughs> the countries out there. Just a couple. Uh, it still sounds fascinating to me. Um, I will find some things to do, but I think we're going to enjoy the house remodeling uh, for the time being. Save your money for the gas that it's going to take to go all the way up to Lancaster and then all the way back down to San Diego, Oceanside to get yeah, some Chris. Especially since we come up far more often than people believe yeah. uh, that the gas is crazy. I almost cost a hundred bucks to fill it yesterday. <laughs> I won't even talk about my, my monster of a car. Yeah. I'm with you. Well, as usual, if you guys need anything from us, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help you out. And for all of you guys in Palmdale, have a great day and we'll see you soon. Peace. Stay safe. Good luck and good learning. Stay out of trouble. No. Still- Still watch your hands, though, please. <laughs> 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 <laughs>